we all have the right to the same access to a subway, whether, no matter where I live in the city, I've got access to a subway. So just to think about it for a minute, you know, that's problematic, as you say, the density for a subway is in fact viable. And we've even gone so far as to build a subway um, that doesn't have the density, and it's a very expensive subway. And you might recall that in the context of our budget debate four years ago, that there was a question about closing But an assumption of that whole argument is that we all have housing choice, that we can all choose to live exactly where we want to live. And I've been thinking about this idea for quite some time, that really our congestion problem is really an affordable housing problem. Because if we could all, apparently, because we all want subways, if we could all live next to a subway, we would. And we do know that in the past 10 years, we've seen a real shift So, first of all, I mean, let's celebrate the fact that transit is so fundamentally appreciated as foundational to prosperity that it has the effect of raising property values. That is actually a good sign. The high cost of something is a signal to the market that you should build more of it. And so one answer to that question is we need to build a subway down Finch West and to some of the other, um, um, I think they're called priority neighborhoods, I might call them neighborhoods. And there has to be a way to reach the transit needs of people at various different price points. And although if you actually had to have had intentionally constructed corridors with the, with the incredible density and walkability and linearity to support a subway, it would be logical to build a subway there. Where lower income people end up living um, out in Mississauga, out in some of the outer suburbs, tends to be places where the, where the pedestrian environment is poor, tends to be places where there are difficult vehicle access, tends to be places where there are significant signals to us as transit planners that this will not be a strong transit market because there are, because there are other problems. Maybe it's just that we have to cross an enormous distance of nothing in order to get to a particular destination. So one of the suggestions that I have or one of the possibilities to think about is that we may need, uh, as that Toronto may need, while it's having this long-term conversation about priority rail infrastructure, to have a very urgent conversation about the bus system and about how the bus system could be reworked so that it is much more useful for going anywhere to anywhere, so that it is as fast and reliable as it can be So that working, that you have to work with enough of the existing reality that you don't need something so expensive that you can't do it easily in the wild. So, you know, and, and that's one of, and the crucial thing is to get that basic degree of access. It's not going to be a subway, but it can be something that's as fast and reliable and frequent and connected 
as we as, as it can be given what it is, and you could actually install some type of a hook. This is the model of the uh, Metro Rapid System in Los Angeles, which I'm encouraged you to ride, where effectively, in a very similar political moment, they said, okay, we've hit the wall on rail construction. We don't have the consensus to move forward with anything much right now. So, and yet we have this fast lane city and, and a tremendous transit need. Don't let anyone tell you that Los Angeles is a transit city. Um, and we have this incredibly overcrowded bus lane. What is everything we can do to increase people's the utility of the bus system that two criteria. One, that we can spread it all over the city. It's not just one corridor we can start with. And two, we can get it all done in a few years. People now on the city council will be able to cut their feet on this thing. This is not something that can be cured by any gigantic multi-million-dollar project that can ever be cured. And the Metro Rapid is very interesting. What it is is bright red buses running at high frequency. They are in mixed traffic because you couldn't fight that battle and get it done quickly. So they do sometimes get sudden shifts, but they are signal priority, and they form a big When they get to the biggest three, but when they cross the biggest grand boulevard in Los Angeles, Wilshire Boulevard, which is very analogous to Yonge Street, they do not all end and force you to transfer and keep going in the same direction. Instead, they run all the way from the hills until they run into the national boundary 30 or 40 k's away. They're very long, they're very fast. They're, well, they're relatively fast given what they're doing, and they're very slow. And they're liberating. They're about 25% Again, what they do is give you those fast paths across the grid, but make every single grid connection so that you can go anywhere you want in the city. And I think we may want to think about trying to do something like that, where you can, where you can make sure that we are doing every, where, you, where we can come out of that saying, with buses, we have now done everything we could reasonably do for every corner of the city, or if it's at all viable, and particularly for all those priorities so that they have access. It's not necessarily everything they want. They can build subways everywhere. On the other hand, this is something 